In 1901, Captain Dimitrios Kontos and the Hellenic Royal Navy salvaged a sunken ship off the Greek island of Antikythera. It is a 2,000-year-old Roman shipwreck. Much to archaeologists' excitement, the ship was loaded with exquisite marble statues and bronzes. They catalogued these precious artifacts. But there is one strange object that has left archaeologists at a loss. What the heck is this? On the surface, this is a gear embedded in the rock like a mechanical device. Because it was found near the island of Antikythera, people usually call it the Antikythera mechanism. For a long time after this thing was discovered, no archaeologists knew what it was used for. So they had to put it in the National Archaeological Museum, Athens. Half a century later, X-ray technology appeared. Some archaeologists tried to detect the Antikythera mechanism with X-rays and found that the complexity and function of the Antikythera mechanism may far exceed our understanding of ancient technology. In this way, the Antikythera mechanism has aroused the interest of countless people and the more research, the more bizarre. Many scientists have tried to replicate this ancient machine. However, the process of restoring old objects is also the process by which you understand it especially these kinds of antique things with a strong sense of mystery. Do you need to understand it first and copy it later? Or do you copy it first and understand it later? Just a chicken and egg problem. The actual process is more likely to be intermingled. Study it, guess its purpose and copy it. So, what was this complex machine used more than 2000 years ago? So naturally, there is a heated debate about this. British scientist Eric John de Solaprice was the first to propose a restoration model. He used X-rays to photograph the Antithera mechanism and found more than 30 gears of different sizes inside it. But because the fragments of the Antikythera mechanism were only one-third of the original, it took Price 20 years to imagine the first hypothesis in 1974. He said that the Antikythera mechanism should be an ancient analog computer with the ability to calculate the calendar. As soon as Price's hypothesis came out, people questioned him, saying, how is this possible? Did the ancient Greeks build computers? However, the shocking thing is yet to come. Therefore, some people further speculate that the function of the Antikythera mechanism may not be as simple as that of the ancient calendar computer. A second model was proposed in 2005 by Michael T. Wright, a mechanical engineer at the British Science Museum. He thought the mechanism could have served as a planetarium. It's modeled not only the motion of the Sun and Moon, but also the inferior planets Mercury and Venus, and the superior planets Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. It is also thought that it should be an astronomical clock used on ships to navigate them by measuring the position of celestial bodies. The use is equivalent to the modern GPS. However, as soon as this hypothesis came out, it was immediately opposed by a group of scientists because one of the functions of the Antikythera mechanism is to predict solar and lunar eclipses. So, navigating at sea, what do you want to know about the time of solar and lunar eclipses? Is there something we haven't discovered yet? Then, British mathematician Tony Freeth also became interested in the Antikythera mechanism. He was initially just out of curiosity and wanted to make a documentary about mysterious antiques. However, as soon as he came into contact with the Antikythera mechanism, he couldn't stop it and immediately formed a team to research it and published their research results in a heavyweight publication in the scientific community, Nature. They published two papers in 2006 and 2008. The Antikythera mechanism, restored by the Freeth team, is made of bronze with a wooden frame on the outside. The machine is 40 cm high, 20 cm wide and 10 cm thick. There is a dial on the front with three inner and outer circles on the dial. There are two dials on the back and a hand rocker next. About 2,000 characters are engraved on the bronze casing on the front which may be instructions for use. The large-scale circle on the front dial shows the Egyptian solar calendar which can calculate that a year is 365 and one quarter days, the same as today's calculations. The medium scale circle shows the zodiac signs. By turning the rocker's arm, you can accurately know the position of the sun and moon on a particular day and the moon's cloudiness. On the back, you can see whether there is a solar or lunar eclipse on this day. The third hypothesis proposed by Freeth, the Antikythera mechanism, is an ancient astronomical prediction device used to predict celestial phenomena. Simply put, it is astrology. 
Astrologers in the ancient East and the West all believed that the changes in the stars in the sky corresponded to the changes in the world and could be accurate to the fate of an individual. Therefore, if you can predict these celestial phenomena and interpret the meaning behind them, you will be able to predict good and bad luck so that you can seek good fortune and avoid disasters. For example, Avidya and Anand in India used ancient Vedic astrology to predict social phenomena such as epidemics and economics. When you turn the Antikythera mechanism's rocker arm forwards or backward, you can see everything in the sky at any moment. The front hands show the changing positions of the sun, moon, and planets in the zodiac. The spiral dial on the back is based on the combination of the lunar and solar calendars showing the month and year and the time when a solar eclipse may occur. The lettering around the front dial shows which constellations are rising and setting at each moment, while the text on the back provides details on predicting a solar eclipse. The rocker arm also has different gears. One gear can even predict when the Olympic Games will open. Of course, this refers to the ancient Olympic Games. In short, by turning the handle on the side of the Antikythera mechanism, you know the past and the future. The argument for the Antikythera mechanism being an astrological interpretation is by far the strongest and most convincing. Therefore, Freeth's research results can be published in the authoritative nature. Speaking of which, have you noticed that for the speculation on using the Antikythera mechanism, it seems that these types are mutually negated. If it's an astrologer, it shouldn't be a navigator. But let's think about it another way. Why can't it be an astrologer to predict the future? An astronomical clock and a navigator. Why can't it be a multifunctional one? For example, the ancient Chinese compass can indicate the direction for navigation. Check the magnetic field and see the Feng Shui. It is a tool of geomantic omen doctrine. At the same time, it is also a prop of some Taoist magic and is multifunctional in one. In the minds of the ancients, there was nothing that could not be crossed by observing the stars, predicting fortune and navigating. The ship carrying the Antikythera mechanism departed from Pergamon, the port of Asia Minor, and sank on its way to Rome. The time is between 60 and 70 BC, the end of the ancient Roman Republic. Astrology had just become popular in the Greek world at that time. The condition for applying astrology is that when a baby is born, people must know the exact astrological position, that is, the position of each constellation, to predict the baby's life. However, before the 2nd century BC, the Greeks did not have complete knowledge of this aspect, that is, the Greeks of that era did not systematically and entirely grasp the star's understanding. An astronomer named Hipparchus of Nicaea brought astrology from Babylon to Greece. Historically, Hipparchus observed the positions of 850 stars and wrote down the trajectories and times of these stars. In addition, he compiled the first star map of Greece, gave ecliptic coordinates and more. In short, he is the first person in ancient Greek astronomy. Some say that Hipparchus achieved so much astronomical success because he had a pair of telescope eyes. But does he have such good eyesight and pinpoint the positions of 850 stars? It is indeed a bit difficult. Now, we know there was already a sophisticated astronomical computer called the Antikythera mechanism in his time. So then, a reasonable guess is that Hipparchus brought back the Antikythera mechanism from Babylon, worked hard to understand it, and taught the Greeks to use it. Hence, astrology became popular in the West. So going back to the source, the Babylonian astronomical calendar is inherited from Sumer. Sumerian civilization is the most mysterious in human history because as soon as it was born, it was amazing and highly developed. The Sumerians mastered the movement of the sun, the moon, and the five planets and created the lunar calendar. They also used astrology to infer good and bad luck. And the important teacher who taught Sumerian civilization was the wise man from maritime civilization, Oannes, the fish god. There is also speculation that the Antikythera mechanism was passed down from ancient Egypt, because those familiar figures in ancient Greece, such as Pythagoras and Solon, had studied in ancient Egypt, and their teachers were high priests in ancient Egyptian temples. When you hear the title of the high priest, do you think of the high priest Imhotep in the movie The Mummy? He fell in love with the queen, could do sorcery, and finally turned into a terrorist who just wanted revenge. 
Imhotep does exist in history, but the only similarity between the image in the movie and the real Imhotep is the bald head shape. Imhotep, 5,000 years ago, was an ancient Egyptian sage-like figure. He is erudite, talented, and upright, and has assisted four generations of pharaohs. His occupations include doctor, poet, astrologer, and secretary. The people deeply love him. This kind of talent is the candidate for the high priest. Therefore, ancient Greek scholars recognize the Egyptian high priests as teachers. When the ancient Greek statesman Solon was studying in Egypt, an Egyptian priest, Sonchis of Sais, told him the story of Atlantis. And Sonchis also said something meaningful. The great flood happened more than once, and you Greeks, like children, grew up from ignorance. Since ancient Greece's mathematics and astronomical knowledge were learned from ancient Egypt, it is possible that the Antikythera mechanism was the same. And this knowledge of ancient Egypt has even older sources. Like the Sumerian civilization, the ancient Egyptian civilization was highly developed from the moment of its birth and was a complete bronze civilization. He has exceptionally high attainments in astronomy, calendar, and mathematics. Legend has it that Horus, the god of the sky and Thoth, the god of wisdom, created it in Upper Egypt. It has a direct relationship with the Atlantis civilization. Oannes, the mentor of the Sumerian civilization and Horus, the ancestor of the Egyptian civilization, were both wise men from the maritime civilization. The knowledge they brought was inherited from an even more ancient civilization. The Antikythera mechanism may well be the legacy of Atlantis. Until today, the research on the function of the Antikythera mechanism has not stopped. And maybe someday there will be discoveries that will shock us.